Hello and welcome to the video and welcome to 2021, I guess. Happy New Year. Uh, this video is to talk about this thing here and give my considered review. Now, for those of you that have been following along, you'll have seen me build this thing out. This is the Black Hawk from E-Wings. In fact, uh, E-Wings do an awful lot of different models, all very similar to this in, in the fact that it's actually a hot wire cut foam and you kind of stick these things together. Now, for those of you that have watched the channel for a while, uh, you'll remember I kind of kicked off um, a little bit of a building frenzy on YouTube with the Dracs in particular. I did the lockdown build of the mini Drac and then did the nano Drac. And then I saw this from E-Wings, got it in and did the build. And I've had it long enough now, I think, to talk about what it's actually like and specifically why this is very much different from a Drac when you're actually flying it. First of all, let me cover the electronics that's in here. Had a couple of people get in touch and ask about that. Uh, the links to the electronics are in the original build videos, but let me just run through this very, very quickly. Inside as a flight controller, we have the Matek F765 wing flight controller. Um, I'm a big fan of this and also still using the F405. Has a Matek GPS unit, a Matek video transmitter unit, which is configurable via the flight controller. The antenna underneath is a Menace RC Aeropod. Uh, the receiver I used in this probably wasn't ideal. It's a little bit too big but it's the things I had hanging around. It was a FreeSky X8R. I decased that so it would fit a little bit better. On the back is a Turner Aero Star 50 amp ESC. Uh, I really like these, these are pretty bulletproof. The only challenge is that sometimes the, uh, the, the soft start is turned on by default and you need to turn that off. The motor at the back, now let me talk a little bit about the motor. I am using a lot of the Sunny Sky uh, kind of motors in my builds at the moment. I originally put on this a thousand kV motor. So this one that I've put on it now is a X2814 uh, 1250 kV motor to replace the thousand kV motor that was on it. I'll talk about the difference that that made in a minute. Uh, the difference it made was night and day to how this thing flew. It flew great on a thousand kV uh, but fantastic on a 1250. But let me go through the stats later on. Uh, so if you're going to build this, definitely go with the 1250, I would recommend. Heard of pilots running this on 14 and 1800 kV motors um, and getting through the battery in a matter of minutes. But I'll cover that again in a minute. On the back, there's a 9 by 5 inch folding prop. Uh, the servos in the wings are Turner G225 MG servos. With me mentioning this a little bit as well, uh, couple of questions from people going, why would you put such cheap servos on a really expensive wing? A uh, couple of things about that. First of all is that uh, the servos are absolutely cheap. So as I mentioned in that video, I actually ordered three uh, rather than the two I needed uh, because there was a good chance one of them wouldn't be completely up to snuff. And checking it with the servo checker, that's absolutely what I found. And that's just something you have to do uh, but actually in terms of how these things perform uh, once they pass the exercise test and they're centering well and you just do a little bit of QA checking on your own they absolutely work brilliantly and they're a great size servo for this kind of meter 1.3 meter wingspan uh, particularly with the huge control surfaces this thing has uh, we need the metal gears and we need a decent amount of torque uh, Fox Air camera in the nose, uh, just a little one, along with a Runcam 2 4K to record the HD footage as I'm flying around. And inside here is a 4000 milliamp hour uh, 20 to 30 C battery, and that will give me a reasonable amount of flight time. Very much dependent, of course, on the motor and prop that you're running. So the headlines for this are that I absolutely love this thing. This is probably one of my favorite wings to fly. Uh, this is not a beginner wing though. This is something that I would recommend that if you are uh, if you are a drag pilot and you're looking for something that's a little bit more boutique, a little bit more like a race car, um, then this is fab. Uh, the aerofoils are symmetrical aerofoils, they're racing aerofoils. And the way it cuts through the air and tracks, in my experience um, and for what I'm after from this wing I would say it performs better a little bit better than a drag. Now I know that might be controversial but 
what you've got to remember is is that the way I want to fly this, I want to fly this fast. I want to fly it in, um, you know, kind of low uh, proximity to the to the floor. I want to fly it like I stole it, and this is absolutely amazing for that. It doesn't float for toffee. Uh, the aerofoil stall stall really quickly. Don't know what stalling is. I've just invented a word. And it does mean that you have to come in under power. Now, with something like a DRAC, it floats in because it has a more conventional aerofoil. With this, it will stall and it will give you very little notification that it's about to do it. So you want to keep it at about 10, 15 miles an hour, absolute minimum, so you kind of have to come in on power and land into the grass. And the other thing as well, it's a very different build. This is... Uh, a collection of foam bits that you have to put together. So if you're up for the challenge of building something like this, this is a fantastic plane. So in terms of the mods that I've done to mine, uh, there's only three that I've done, one that I'm about to do. First one is I have made the wings removable. Uh, the wings are held in place by a friction fit. Uh, the carbon spars go into channels that are cut and the channels are cut um, with a taper. So the wings are actually very, very secure on here. But for travel, I take the wings off. So I've made it so that the servo connectors out here that you can just snap together when I push the wings in. That makes it easier to transport. Uh, obviously, the folding prop at the back is something else that I've done. Uh, because she's coming in in some pretty uh, horrid conditions, I just want to make sure that if the prop gets a strike, it'll fold out the way. Obviously, you can see that I've put some extra graphics on here. Um, just couldn't help myself. There'll be a video about vinyl cutting um, this month, so stay tuned. Um, and the last thing then is the motor KV change. Uh, let's, let me spend a little bit of time uh, talking about that because that made a massive difference to how this thing flew. Now the guys at E-Wings are very good. On the website there is a really good list of uh, power combos that would suit a model like this really well. In fact, I'm thinking of doing a video where I talk about how to choose uh, motor and prop combos for the kind of plane that you're looking at. Had a couple of people get in touch and it is a little bit of a black art. And again, there's all the, you know, watts per pound or thrust per weight and all that kind of jazz. And it does kind of depend very much on the, the kind of wing layout and model design it is. And also how you want to fly it and whether you want to go for endurance or whether you want to go for out and out speed as to what you choose. So if that'll be interesting, do let me know. That might be something that comes later this month. For the 1000 kV motor, uh, the maximum speed was about 72 miles an hour in a slight dry dive, so that's probably about 70 miles an hour realistically. That would pull about 25 amps. Uh, cruising at about 50% throttle would be about 45 miles an hour, and that's about 9 amps. So that would empty my 4000 milliamp power pack in about 18 to 20 minutes. That's how I had it originally. It was a very efficient setup, um, and the amp draw was an awful lot lower than I was expecting. But then I was probably using one of the lower KV motors that anyone's fitted to one of these things, because I was kind of trying to replicate a, a similar setup to something that was on my Kaipeina 2. However, the launches were a little bit interesting. Uh, I had to make sure that it was a really good throw to get it into the air, because it needed a, a, a moment for the thrust to kind of pick up the speed to get these wings creating enough lift for it to fly. Again, I'm using the auto launch stuff. And also the other thing that I found was that in terms of the uh, the excitement that I was expecting from this, it was it's still amazing fun to fly, but you couldn't really do those crazy things and um, you know that those kind of treat top passes that I was expecting. However, replacing the motor, everything else remained the same, prop remained the same, ESC, everything else was the same. Uh, replacing the motor made this into a completely different beast. Launches were a piece of cake, it just takes off. Uh, the maximum speed on this has risen to about 95 miles an hour. That's pulling 35 amps. If you compare that to the 25 amps at 72 mile an hour with 1000 kV motor, that's given me about another 25 miles an hour. The cruise is around 60, 65 miles an hour now. That's gone up, uh, but the amp draw has doubled at cruise. So now the amp draw is something like about 17 and a half amps, which means it's going to empty my 4,000 milliamp hour pack in about nine minutes. So it's pulling twice the current. It'll empty my battery in half the time. But as Greg at E-Wing says, yeah, it's twice the current, but it's twice the fun. And it 
kind of is. So that's why I'd recommend if you were going for something like this, I'd recommend a minimum of kind of 1100 if you want a more efficient setup. Uh, but actually, why would you buy this for an efficient setup? Uh, this is a race car of, of a wing, and that's the way you need to set it up. So 1250 or even 1400 if you really want to be a hooligan, is probably the sweet spot for this. The only last thing I am going to do, I'm going to fit a little buzzer in here. This is one of the Maytek buzzers. These are only four or five pounds. Uh, there's probably just enough room in here for me to pop one in. The reason for that is that I have had this land in very long grass, which it's kind of coming down in at the moment. I don't know if you can see some of the, the schmutz on the, on the skids at the bottom. Hopefully that's being picked up. Um, in the longer grass, it uh, can be a little bit tricky to see, particularly if your spotter was like, oh, it's, it's over there, it was, it was behind that big bush or whatever it is. Uh, trying to find it can be a bit tricky. Now, there is the RSSI trick. Uh, put a link down below if you want to go and have a look at that. But um, having a buzzer on it means I can just make this thing make a noise. I'm going to find it a lot easier. Uh, I'm going to add buzzers to all the fleet that I'm currently flying in the winter uh, just to help me find these uh, these bigger models because it is actually relatively low profile it doesn't take much grass for this to disappear particularly if it's in uh, a field that's got quite a lot of undulation if i built this again i would probably do a couple of things differently now i've built one uh, so for those of you that may be thinking about this this may be of use um, I would potentially open up the electronics bay a little bit. It is a bit tight in here for everything. There's nothing to stop you cutting out a little bit more foam and to cut your own Corex lid or something for the top. An extra um, couple of centimeters in here could have made all the difference. I have fed that back to Greg at uh, E-Wings. I don't think Greg uses anywhere near as much of the electronics in here as I do. Um, and also, you know, there was no chance for me to get the ESC inside here. So there is potentially an opportunity to expand it, extend this bay a little bit to give you a little bit more room to play with. Definitely go with a 12 kV motor and I have laminated the bottom. Uh, you can again see bits of the field in here. Uh, that is working really well. Uh, I wasn't going to bother with that. I only really did it so I could do my decal on the bottom. But actually that's saving it from an awful lot of abuse at the moment. Uh, it's sliding over uh, stuff in the field rather than it kind of getting stuck in the foam. Particularly because this foam is, is kind of almost open cell uh, because it has been hot wire cut. So those are the things that I would do. And that kind of leads me on to the last thing I want to talk about, really, which is um, answer all those people who've said, well, it's just a Drac clone, isn't it? As somebody who flies Dracs, and I kind of said this at the top, um, this is nothing like a Drac. Um, a Drac, I think, is a lot more forgiving. I think a Drac is a lot more floaty. Uh, a Drac is a really good sports car. Uh, this is a Formula One car. This is definitely something that you shouldn't be building. If you've not flown wings before, I'd recommend you have a couple of years under your belt before you try something like this. Um, and if you are a reasonable pilot and you have a little bit of skill, uh, this is epic. It is absolutely fantastic. And because of that, I think, you know, I can confidently say that uh, this is not a drag. And it was disappointing when the pictures of these, these things was kind of uh, put on Instagram by Greg over at E-Wings, that a lot of people, uh, uh, the right-wing uh, drag pilots uh, kind of uh, gave him a bit of a hard time about that. Um, so much of a hard time that he was very close to just not making the whole thing. Uh, it got that nasty. Um, and that's not great. This is a guy who is cutting these in his shed, essentially. Um, and these are boutique wings um, off the back of that amount of uh, nastiness that he had um, Greg did get in touch with Chris at right wing and have a conversation uh, to let him know that he'd done this because he didn't want to do anything that would upset right wing because he likes the Drax and um, Chris and him came to a gentleman's agreement which is why unfortunately this isn't being sold in the USA so if you want to get hold of it in the USA let Chris at right wing know that it, this isn't a competitor um, because as far as I'm concerned because I fly both and this is nothing like this. There will be days where I want to fly the Drax. There will be days when I want to fly this. And there will be days when I want to fly both. And the building of these, some of you who have been looking at getting one um, have probably noticed that the shop 
the e-wing shop has been closed. Uh, sounds like Greg was exceptionally busy with his day job, because uh, actually this isn't his day job, this is what he does uh, for love. Um, his day job just got nuts here in the UK. Uh, I believe talking to Greg that the E-Wing store is going to be open. I put a link down below, uh, but he is going to be making these things to order. It's not like he, you know, has 40, 50 kits sat on the shelf. He's just going to order one and then, you know, five to seven days later, it'll be cut and it'll be on its way to you. So this isn't a high volume thing. This is a little bit of a unicorn. If you've ever seen one of these flying, uh, it'll be somebody who's gone out their way to get one. I am going to be making another E-Wings model. Um, the 1000 kV motor that I took off this and I've actually got another one of those Turner GESC's um, I potentially have another thing from E-Wings on the way I have been spectacularly impressed with this it's made me fall in love with laminating again that's probably a bit strong but it's got me back into laminating I'm quite happy to laminate again there are other things that I could play with um, and with that efficient setup with the 1000 kV motor um, there's potentially another model that uh, would be perfect for that kind of power system. So stay tuned and you will be seeing more stuff from E-Wings. So thank you for all of you that have uh, stuck with this. Hopefully if you have been thinking about this, the list of stuff that I've used helped. And it's kind of clarified for those of you that are looking at this and saying, is it this or is it a DRAC? Um, if you're in the Americas, you can't buy this. Um, that's part of the agreement that Greg and Chris have. But if you're everywhere else and uh, you are an accomplished pilot that has a bit of skill to fly and you want something that is absolutely built like a racing wing and is going to go like stink, this is what I recommend you get hold of. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.